Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to use our results from uh, separating hyperplanes uh, from a previous lecture in order to prove, to give a proof of a theorem of alternatives. In fact, two theorems of alternatives, just for a little practice. They're, they're quite similar. So theorems of alternatives are really the basis of duality theory. And you know, even more strongly, they're essentially equivalent to a proof of strong duality for linear programming. We're going to see that in a, uh, in a different lecture. So though there are many ways to prove theorems of uh, alternatives, um, we are going to use our result from uh, our geometric characterization of separation and the existence of separating hyperplanes. Um, so we will use a separation rather than algebraic argument. So let's um, first recall the key separation result that, uh, that we want to use. Um, so we'll start drawing it. If we have a point Y and a convex set X that's closed, and of course always non-empty, um, then there exists a hyperplane which leaves y strictly on one side. Or algebraically, there exists some c such that c transpose y is strictly less than c transpose x for any x in our closed convex set x that does not contain the point y. So this is what we're going to use. OK, so let's get to our first uh, result that we want to show. So this uh, theorem says the following. Exactly one of the following holds. Statement A is that there exists an x that's non-negative such that ax equals b. I guess I should have written given a matrix A and a vector B, exactly one of the following holds. Statement A is there exists an x non-negative such that AX equals B. And statement B is that there exists a vector Z such that Z transpose A is a non-negative vector and C transpose B is strictly negative. So again, what this theorem is saying is not that for any A and B, statement A has to hold, clearly that, that's, clearly that that may not be possible. But it's saying that if A holds, then B cannot hold. And if A does not hold, then B must hold. So uh, let's, uh, let's show that this is the case. So let's first prove that if A holds, then B cannot hold. So we're going to show that A implies that not B, that B does not hold. Uh, and this is actually pretty straightforward. So if A holds, then we know that there exists some x hat that has the following properties. x hat is not negative and A x hat equals B. And so then we ask, well, is it possible that B also holds? But for B to hold, there has to exist uh, some, some z. So suppose that's true. So if, if there exists z such that z transpose a is greater than or equal to 0 and z transpose b is strictly less than 0, are we going to get a contradiction? We see that we will because if 0, if zero is less than or equal to z transpose a, well, certainly I can multiply both sides by anything non-negative, in particular the, my vector x hat, which is component-wise non-negative, and I preserve that, that inequality. Um, but now we see we have a problem because a x hat equals b. So this equals z transpose b, which is now less than 0. So we have that 0 is strictly less than 0 which is a contradiction, you also see the importance of the strict inequality in this, in this statement. 
So we have that if A holds, then B cannot hold. We have left to show that if A does not hold, B uh, must hold. And note that it would not be appropriate to show that if B holds, A does not hold, because that's exactly what we proved. That's just the contrapositive of this statement. So uh, we need to show that not A implies B. And here's where we're going to use separation. We didn't need to use separation in the previous, in the previous argument. So let's, let, let's define our set X to be all vectors W that are equal to AX, where X is some non-negative vector. So the claim is that this set X is convex and closed. So this takes uh, some thought. But once we show that it is convex and closed, we can immediately plot, apply our separation results. And how are we going to apply those separation results? What does not A mean? A says that there exists an X such that AX is equal to B. So A implies that B is in the set X. Therefore, not A, is, which is our starting point, is equivalent to B to the statement that B is not an element of X. But that's telling us that B is not an element of a convex set, and hence we can apply our separation results. So this is equivalent in turn to the existence of some vector. I'm going to call it Z here just to match up with the notation that we want in the proof, such that Z transpose B is strictly less than Z transpose W for any W in X. Well, let's see what this means. So this means that uh, Z transpose B is less than or equal to, oops, sorry, is strictly less than, that's obviously important, Z transpose AX for any X that's greater than or equal to zero. And not, note in particular that because zero is allowed, all the, the, the origin is allowed for X, this tells us that um, Z transpose B is greater than zero. But also, if Z transpose A times X is therefore greater than or equal to zero for any X, the only way that that can happen is if Z transpose A itself is component-wise non-negative. Because if Z transpose A had, had, had even one non-negative component, then we could just let X be zero everywhere else and some huge value on that negative component and it would, and it would violate this inequality. So this means that we have found a Z such that Z transpose B is negative and Z transpose A is greater than or equal to zero. And that is exactly statement B. So in other words, we have shown that if A does not hold, then B doesn't hold. Let's do another one of these just for practice. So it's gonna be very similar. So statement A is that there exists an X such that AX is less than B. And statement B is that there exists a Z such that Z is non-negative and Z transpose A is equal to zero and Z transpose B is less than zero. We're gonna do a very simple, very similar thing. So first of all, uh, I, I should have written, okay, so theorem exactly one of these holds. Exactly one of the following holds, and I should even say given a, a and B, exactly one of the following holds. So first, uh, A implies not B is essentially similar to what we did before. So I won't go through the details. So now let's show via separation that not A implies that B has to hold. 
All of this comes down to defining our set x as we did before. So x is going to be all vectors w such that w is greater than or equal to ax, where x is any element of Rn. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to claim without proof for now that x is convex and closed. Note in particular that x contains the positive orthant. We'll see how we, how we use that in a, in a moment. So not A is equivalent to, or just say implies that B is not an element of X. So therefore by separation, this means that there exists a vector Z such that Z transpose B is less than Z transpose W for any W in x. So what do we uh, have? So first of all, note that this immediately implies that z non-negative must hold because x contains uh, the positive orthant. Since x contains the positive orthant. So we've got z is greater than or equal to zero. Um, and now let's look at z transpose uh, w. z transpose w greater than zero implies that z transpose ax is greater than or equal to zero. And this has to hold for every x, not non-negative, just every x in Rn. How can that possibly be? This is some vector. The only way that the dot product between a vector and every vector being non-negative is if that vector is equal to zero. So this implies that we have z transpose a is equal to zero. And this is again these statements z non-negative such that z transpose b is less than zero and z transpose a is equal to zero is exactly the content of statement B. So this shows how we can use separation to prove a theorem of uh, the alternative. And we're gonna see in future lectures that this is something that uh, is, is really equivalent to strong duality for linear programming.